Hey guys, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization and for BJJ Fanatics. Check this out. This video right now that you're about to watch, duh, is free. It is quite lengthy. It is an explanation of how and why strength training can help with your grappling. Super in-depth. Enjoy. Here's the thing. Down in the description below, there is a link for part two of this video that you have to purchase, if you'd like, from BJJ Fanatics. They're the best, absolute best video production people in grappling. Super trustworthy source. It's almost two hours long and is jam-packed with everything you need to know about how to actually understand, construct, modify, complete, and recycle your own personal weight training program for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or any other grappling sport you may be involved in. So check this out. Watch this video here for free. Enjoy. Let us know in the comments what you like, what you don't, what you want to see of more in the future. And if you want to click on that link and buy stuff, it's almost two hours chock full of specific instructions on how to get going. Folks, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Hey folks, I'm Dr. Mike. I am a jiu-jitsu brown belt. That's right, they gave me a belt. I colored it brown. This is my coach, Josh Vogel, and we are out of the jiu-jitsu company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we are here to teach you fine folks a couple of things. The main one is how to strength train for jiu-jitsu to become, drum roll, better at jiu-jitsu. But before that, we're gonna talk about how and why strength helps in jiu-jitsu because there's a lot of gunk, to be honest, in the jiu-jitsu community about, oh, does strength training really help? Oh, but my buddy, he was strong, he gassed out really fast. We're gonna squash all that and we're gonna take 10 independent points, little teaching points to show you where in a jiu-jitsu match strength matters, how it matters, and how it interacts with technique. Once we're done doing that here, we're gonna go in and teach you all of the basics of strength training for jiu-jitsu teach you how to make your own program so you can get strong and jacked and finally stand up to your landlord. And then after that, we'll have some really good resources so you guys can get strong yourselves. Let's go. All right, folks, there are at least 10 ways I can count. I can only count to like 11 or 12. So maybe there's more, but I'm not sure, but there's at least 10 ways in which strength helps you a ton in your jujitsu game. And we're gonna go through all of them. Here's number one. These are sort of in order of how a jiu-jitsu match goes to some extent, you'll see, check this out. The number one first thing to do in pretty much every jiu-jitsu match, well, is to eye your opponent and make sure you look like a psycho. We're just gonna do that now real quick. Whoa, ah, the cat hiss gets them every time. But if they don't do that, the second thing you do in jiu-jitsu is assert your grips. As everyone who does jiu-jitsu at a higher level and above knows, getting your grips at all is a really important thing. Getting your grips in a place where you want them to set up your next sequence of moves is a huge thing. Now, if Josh happens to be super weak and he tries to assert his grips in any way he likes, I can, without a ton of effort, grip break, set my own grips, do all kinds of nonsense to him that he probably doesn't want to be done. And because I get to grips first if I'm stronger, and he can't break my grips, or if I break his because I'm stronger and get to his, he is already fighting off the defensive the entire time. How do I know this? He taught me. <laughs> but in any case, it works in real uh, competition as well. Now, if Josh has been strength training for a while, even if he's at the same size, but much stronger than I expect, when he goes for grips and I try to break and it doesn't work and I go, holy crap, the stronger your grip is, which is a product of strength training, then if Josh has his grips here, feel free to go and start doing stuff, Josh, then he can do stuff to me and it doesn't matter how I defend, the big problem is I'm defending. And what, uh, what do you think about if someone starts on the defense in a match? Is that generally a good thing or not so good thing? It's unwise. Boom. That's how smart he is. That's all he needs to say. <laughs> on to the next. So, but on a serious note, big grips are a huge thing. And if you can assert your grips quick, and if you can assert your grips strong, and even if one grip break doesn't occur, so for example, if I'm over here and I'm like, oh, I know this move, and I try to grip break and it doesn't work, there is a bit of demoralization that happens to your opponent. And when they're busy doing this, what are they not doing? Asserting their own grips anywhere else. So if you can assert a really strong grip and start your game, 
that opponent is already on the back foot and that's no good. That's the number one reason, not in order of importance, but in order in the sequence of a jiu-jitsu match, that strength is important. You're probably wondering, well, what's number two? Let's find out. Way number two in which strength can really help your jiu-jitsu in the sequence of a match, let's say your grip fighting went well, but your opponent was the first to try a takedown. If you are stronger, you have that much more wiggle room and leeway to stuff a takedown. Of course, being big helps, but however big you are or are not, strength can help you shuck or stuff a takedown and then engineer some sort of takedown yourself and reversal because you just have to take less crap from people when you're stronger and energy directed towards you can be more easily redirected or actually directly countered if you're strong versus if you're not strong. So for example, if Mr. Josh Vogel, Coach Josh Vogel, tries some sort of takedown on me, and let's say he gets in for whatever he wants to go, he's gonna try shuck me down, okay? Yep, that's bad news, and I go to the ground. But I don't train with weights, and this was quite a, pretty predictable. However, if he tries that takedown again, as soon as he tries to pull me down, because I'm strong, I don't have to go down. Because I'm strong, I can stay upright and push against him. And now that he's here, what's he gonna do? I'm not sure, but fuck that, literally. And you guys have seen enough jujitsu that even at a high level, sometimes people just push the other guy away and you're like, ah, I thought I had all kinds of jujitsu planned, right? Now the, the classic push away might not work super well, but you can use your leverages. So another thing is if Josh comes in on me, right? I can use his head and push his head away. Now, as I'm demoing here, this looks like one of these fake Sistema videos from Russia, <laughs> where it's like, watch this, I just touch his head and he goes, right? But as he's coming in, and this happens in the real world, you put a lot of pressure on someone's head hard, you can do all kinds of stuff afterwards that they might not have planned for, and even if he shucks it and comes back up. So if he's coming in and I shuck his head away, even if he repositions, that's a fail takedown as far as we're concerned. He expended energy. And good, best thing is, I'm not down multiple points because I'm not on the ground. Does this only work for Jack people? No way. So if I come in and I want to do a takedown on Josh, maybe I come in for a single, he can sprawl out, put me on my back. Now, what you guys saw him do is he had that outside position here. If his chest right there and his arm is really strong, his hip is strong, and his tricep on the other hand is strong, he can push me away with unreal amounts of force, go ahead, and that's real bad for me. But if I can tie him up and lock him in and we can fight a little bit, yeah, then, then maybe I've got something here. The stronger you are, the more you can deny people takedowns of every kind, and that's bad news for them. And that brings us to point number three, which is you can take people down harder, that's up next. Third reason, method, way in which jujitsu is augmented by strength is that you can off balance people better for takedowns. We'll get to the takedowns themselves in just a bit. But if you can off balance someone with a huge amount of strength, that automatically means they're more susceptible to the takedown you have layered right after that unbalance. So for example, if Josh wants to take me down, if he's really weak, he does this stuff, go ahead, yeah, that's nice, and that doesn't really do much to me, I don't have to make any corrections, now he's in the same spot, now we're doing white ball jiu-jitsu, we just do this and run around, right? But if he's really strong, one of two things will happen. The second most ideal thing is, I feel his strength so much, I over-adjust and prop up. Oh, oh, and I'm done. Right? That's it. Takedown successful because he was so strong. I had to not get just bowled over or snapped down and I had to posture and he's relying on me to get rigid in my posture for my legs to be exposed. That's the second best thing that could happen. The first best thing is if he's strong enough and he pushes his hips out, he could just smash me to the ground with, uh, with that movement to begin with. So let's, let's pretend we have Hulk strength. First snap down. 
beautiful. Now, again, it may look like we're doing a fake martial art where none of this really works in the street, but in high level competitive jujitsu, correct me if I'm not wrong, people get snapped down to the ground mm -hmm. pretty regularly. And if you can barely do a pull up with your body weight, this muscle, the muscles that do this, okay, you can snap some people down. If you can do pull ups, sets of five, sets of 10, at whatever body weight with a 25 pound plate hanging, when you catch someone's lapels and you snap them down, they're gonna feel it. And either they prop up too much or they fall. Either way, you have a setup. There's a bunch of different ways to off balance. If you're stronger, they all help. One of the ones that I like is if we're moving around and Josh gets in on me here, all I do is I take my hand up to the neck and I just do like a dumbbell bench press. It's pretty straightforward, I do this. Now, Josh is exaggerating for a comedic effect, of course, but even if I'm just a little stronger than he prefers, I push this way, his leg opens up here, and I come in. If I wasn't so strong, I'd do this, nothing would happen, he's still stepping, and I'm like, shit, coach, what do I do? Tap, I usually like to tap standing up before the match really gets going. I tell people I'm a jiu-jitsu competitor, it technically means if I tap after five seconds, I'm still a competitor, right? For five seconds, you're a competitor. Hey, all day. All right, way number four in which strength magnifies your jujitsu is it gives you a larger margin of error in real life situations in order to actually secure and pull off any technique starting from any kind of takedown. Yes, in class, when you're just learning to move, or when you're flow rolling, you can get exactly where you need to go in order to pull off a technique. For example, if we practice certain types of takedowns in class, I can secure this sort of high crotch position here and I can leverage it into a takedown. Even if Josh tries to sprawl with this leg, it's kind of too late because I kind of already have it set in, right? So I'm pretty secure in getting that takedown. Now, in the real world, you may not be able to put your hand in that ideal position every single time. Intellectually, we can think about it this way. If there's one tiny point and the move doesn't work, unless you touch it, we can say the sphere of effect is very small. If I have to do the karate, judo, die now chop, it's only the, the little tiny part of the shoulder that I'm aiming for. We know that shit doesn't work in real life because when somebody's moving like this, you're not gonna Steven Seagal that shit. Oh, you see that? Huh? I could have gotten that, I just wasn't feeling like it. Hmm? So. If we think about, if you're not so strong and you have to get to that wraparound high crotch position, the sphere of effect essentially is right here. If I'm not very strong and I grab Josh here, he can sprawl out and I'm fucking done. If I'm not so strong, I have to get the right position, then I can go to all of my other parts of the technique because I have no choice. I have to have every move go almost ideal. And if you see someone super weak, being really awesome at jujitsu, they're gonna be unreal technical, because that's a good thing, but also it's their only path forward. Now, if you're strong enough, the spheres start to get bigger, which means your targets are the same, still center of the sphere, though I still want to put my hand around here when I'm setting up this takedown, but just in case if I screw up and put my hand here, if I'm not strong and I'm here, Josh will simply sprawl with his leg and I'm, I'm done. I can hold on, but it doesn't matter because his leg's already away and I'm gonna be shot out the other side. Now, if I'm real strong and I get this here and Josh tries to sprawl and it doesn't work, I can scoop up and keep going. The stronger I am, the more leverage advantage I gain and my opponent loses. If I was to be maybe Brian Shaw or something, 6'9", 440, world's strongest man, I surmise that if Brian Shaw got right here, there would be no sprawling because he can one arm row more than Josh can kick out. So he would just pick you up like that and then probably tear you in half. But the real critical point here is this. In a live situation, even in class, when you're going live with others, for sure in competition and the streets, you see that? Ah, maybe not that. But in any case, in the real world, 
ideal positions might not actually materialize. And then if Josh has a certain takedown, go to, go ahead and whatever you like. Notice right there, he's about to trip my ass up. His hand is here. If he's super weak, it has to be here for the leverage to work. If he's super strong and in the heat of the moment, he accidentally grabs here, he doesn't have to fuck with anything, just run it through. He can actually make it work off this and I'm still going, boom, that's it. Because of strength. Now mind you, the big thing here we're not saying that if you get strong enough, technique doesn't matter. Bullshit. Technique matters, and in a second, we'll tell you exactly why it matters even more because of this. But in a live situation, being strong means you have a wider sphere of attack, a bigger area of attack, and thus more leeway on what techniques work and what doesn't. Because if you're tired and you're gassing, and there's two minutes left, you try five takedown attempts and zero of them work because you were off just by hair in the positions you were going. That sucks. But if you're big and strong, specifically very strong, and you just get remotely close to where you wanna be, boom, all kinds of stuff can actually work. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works in real life and that's what matters. All right guys, so coming up are multiple pairs of videos. Each of the first clips is a technique being done pretty well. Not ideally, but pretty damn well. Josh is actually trying a little bit. The second of each pair of videos is Josh intentionally flubbing the technique and doing it eh, in a way that gets it done, but very meh. So the thing here is, if Josh is very strong, if he's been training with weights, there is a high probability that even the meh technique can actually get the job done and it doesn't need to be perfect every time. In flow rolling, when the partner isn't really resisting, perfect technique every time can be a realistic goal that can be met. But in real life rolling, whether it be in competition, even live rolls at the gym, certainly on the streets, bang, bang, you're gonna have a situation where not every move is perfect. And if you have lots of strength, your probability of still accomplishing a sweep, a takedown, any other kind of jujitsu move, guard pass, et cetera, et cetera, is just going to be higher even when it's not done ideally, as you can clearly see. So while in your technical training, you should be trying to get the moves to be executed as ideally as possible, like the first clip in all of these, in reality, as you strength train alongside of your jujitsu technical training, you are going to be able to give yourself a higher probability that even if the move doesn't go so well for you, even if you're trying your best and the other person's slick, they moved out of the way, you slipped, it's just a real fast pace, you're tired, whatever the reason, if you are stronger, your ability to succeed in moves that are not ideal expands as the influence of each one of your little mini spheres expands. And that is a huge, huge benefit of strength training for jujitsu. Next reason, reason number five, why strength can be super helpful to jujitsu is this. There is an amazing interplay between strength and technique. Reason number four was that if your technique isn't spot on, strength can expand the acceptable sphere of positions of your body through which to actually have an effect. If, you, if the ideal technique requires grabbing right on the belt, if you're stronger, maybe grabbing here works, maybe even grabbing here works, maybe grabbing here works, for sure. Now, as you become more technical, what ends up happening is the position that you grab is still the best position is the center of that sphere, for sure. But as you become more and more technically proficient, the probability that once you grab this, the shit works well, escalates. If I know the technique and I put my hand in the right spot and put this in the right spot, if I'm not that good technically, yeah, I'm putting my shit in the right spot, but maybe my hips are off, my movement is off, maybe there's a 50% chance I get the technique. If I'm strong, maybe there's a 60% chance I get that technique, but also there's a 50% chance here and here, 50% chance here and here, so I've widened my sphere. I haven't done a ton to make sure that I get the technique on really technical people, but I have more leeway. Now here's this. As your technique improves as well, which should fucking goddamn well be, you're training jiu-jitsu all the damn time. As your technique gets better, instead of this being 50%, if I get here, let's say I'm a black belt now, I'm at 80 or 90%. That means with strength and technique, 
the size and density of these effect spheres start to expand such that I used to be 50% if I got it on the money. Now I'm 80% if I get it on the money. I used to be 30% if I grab here and the coach is like, do the move anyway, idiot. Just try to do something. Now, instead of being 30% here, I'm 60% here. If I'm big and I have good technique and I grab the three inches away from the right spot, I have more of a chance of hitting the technique than I ever did in a million years being of low technique and low strength. That way, technique feeds into strength until you reach like Roger Gracie or Gordon Ryan status where the entire person's body is a total density sphere. He just does this and you die or some shit like that. That's pure jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I learned it in Brazil as a child. Josh is my father. He raised me there. You guys ever see Bloodsport? The first 10 minutes of that movie is basically how Josh and I met. I was from Korea training for... Is that the one with the bamboo so, and the, um, where he's like uh, kicking the bamboo tree and then it dies or, that's he, or he dies? A, <laughs> that is a scene from a John claude Van Damme movie. And you know what, folks? That's good enough because they're all the fucking same. In any case... <laughs> oh, that's the powder one. Powder was a good movie. Yeah, no, no, where he throws the powder in the dude's eyes. Oh, yeah, that's right. And these yeah, are like this. Bloodsport, yep. amazing. Yeah. I think the movie, the tree is Kickboxer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick right. the tree. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, if you haven't seen those movies, you should stop watching this right now and go see those movies because actually they're more important than anything you can learn from the two of us. But here's the real deal. Here's the final say. There is no competition between strength and technique. And I'll tell you, I'll give you guys a stupid analogy. We can say that strength is like the warhead size of the missile you're shooting from your fighter jet. The bigger the warhead, the more it blows up. You don't even have to shoot that close to the other plane. And if it's a big enough warhead, it destroys everything. Technique is how precise the guidance system is. If you have an unreal guidance system, yep, you can shoot one bullet at a plane and still knock it out. But do you have that guidance system? No, I'm not Roger Gracie. I plan on being here in a couple, after you watch this DVD, you will be Roger Gracie, guaranteed. Literally, you can change your name. But in the real world, you, bullet precision doesn't work so well. So if your technique is good, your homing device for getting to where you need is fucking sweet, and if your warhead is big, you got a ton of strength, that means the blast radius is big. That means when I grab Josh on anywhere in his body, if I'm super technical and strong, it's just more and more bad news. Oh, finally, wake up, man, you're trying to talk that shit. I'm trying to get that bell promotion, baby. In any case, being strong helps, but it helps in still other ways, which leads us to point number six. Next way that jujitsu can be super helped by your strength. Ideally, you wanna move in a way that utilizes your technique and applies as much strength as possible. But in some cases, just a little bit of technique and a lot of strength can go a long way, especially in very specific situations or kind of, oh shit, I didn't wanna be here emergency situations. You can use strength, maybe not to assert yourself and put yourself in a much better position, not in an advanced position where you're on the attack. At that point, your technique really has to be a big deal. But maybe, just maybe, you can get out of a really bad spot with strength. We have to say that that is a feature of the strength benefits of jujitsu because you'll just see it all the time on the mats. We're not gonna do a holistic assessment of how strength can help you without sort of mentioning this. And it's not the sexiest part of jujitsu, but it fucking works. So check this out. Strength can be super, super helpful in, for lack of a better term, getting somebody the fuck off of you, which is a big deal. So our first example here is going to be somebody with a really tight, heavy side control. You just don't want them around anymore. You bump, bump, move around. If you're not using a lot of strength, it might not work. If you use a ton of strength, if you have a ton of hip strength and pushing strength, you can bump and just move the person out of the way. It's absolutely a viable option. The second example we give here is a guard break. If someone is a real tight guard and they have really lanky legs and it's really wrapped around you, it can be hard to get out. But if you're really strong, you can just stand right the hell up. They can't keep you down. You essentially just deadlift your way out of that situation, and then you can just jerk, jerk, and push out. And if you're strong, it can really frustrate the other opponent, giving you a huge advantage. Reason number seven, how strength can radically improve your jiu-jitsu, is in a weird way, strength actually improves your endurance. People say, hey, big, strong guys, they gas out fast. Two things on that. One, big guys gas out fast. And if they're fatter versus less muscular, they gas out even faster. So if you have a certain body size, 
Making yourself stronger doesn't mean bigger, it means more muscle, less fat, and then you gas out less. But if you're intelligent, and especially as you get good at jiu-jitsu technically, you start to be able to have better endurance because any given move that you do or is done to you, if Josh and I are standing here and we're pushing and pulling and we're doing moves to each other, we get, as the French say, a letaillot, right? You get very tired. If Josh is huge and way stronger than me and super technical, every time he pushes and I pull, it might take me 90% of my abilities to resist or to do my own moves. Repeat efforts at 90% of your total body's ability to move, each one lasting two or three seconds, that's gonna drain the living shit out of you. Now, if you're really strong in any given level of scenario, a smaller percentage of your peak abilities is being asked of you anytime. So if I'm really big and strong and we're doing this kind of BS, Josh is working at 90%, I'm working at 50. So after about three or four minutes of this white belt nonsense where we push each other across the mat, <laughs> Josh may be ultra super tired, but because I'm bigger and stronger, specifically stronger, I only ever had to try 50% that entire time. Because as you get stronger, every given effort you give in jujitsu falls as a fraction of your maximum percent of effort, more strength means more endurance. Unless you spaz out and white belt the shit and do this, and there's only ever 100, 100, if you are intelligent about it, more strength means more endurance and you even have control over it. If you wanna really get in there and get really using some power moves, sweet, know that your gas tank will drain. But if you have tons of strength and you decide to just pop and move just how you need in order to stay alive, in order to set up a good move, you are really just using a tiny fraction of your abilities and when it comes time to give it your all, you're that much more ready. Next advantage to strength. No matter what size you are, more strength is helpful against people of your own size. It's really helpful against people smaller than you, but it's most helpful and can make the biggest impact against big, strong people. And in both open mat, the real world, and the most important place of all, points-based IBJJF competition, of course, you will run into people that are bigger than stronger than you. So it's easy for me to do all this BS and be like, oh yeah, get big and strong. Josh Vogel here at 150 pounds and I'm gonna do this. Shut up, your black belt doesn't mean anything. Get out of here, see, it's easy. Being strong is fun. And if I wouldn't uh, train much for strength, just a little to keep my strength, I'd still be a bit stronger than Josh, no big deal. And if I was as technical as him, I'd be winning a bunch of roles, it'd be awesome. Now what if Josh upgraded how would I deal with that? I'm Mr. Technical, I don't train with weights, I don't need it because I'm still bigger and stronger, I got my natural genes. And then all of a sudden, uh, shit. So now I don't train because I'm naturally strong, but Josh got himself a little promotion, if you know what I mean. And uh, this is a really, really big problem. This is actually our friend Gary. He's like 6'5 and 300 pounds. And if you run into him, all sorts of techniques seem that they don't really work. How do you single leg this? What is going on? But if you're strong, you have some sort of fighting chance. And by the way, Gary's also a weightlifter, so he's also getting strong. Bad news for everyone, so a huge advantage you can give yourself, especially if you're a hardcore competitor and you love that open, and all those big ultra boys give you problems, the stronger you get, even if you only weigh 200 pounds. You go up against a 300 pound person, ask yourself the question, would you wanna be a real strong 200 pounds? Or like, oh, I'll just catch him with my technique, 200. Think about it. Way number nine in which increasing your strength can help your jiu-jitsu, saving the very important for almost last here, because it hopefully doesn't happen to you, is by preventing injury risk, or sorry, reducing the risk of injury rather. Injury is something that is ubiquitous to jiu-jitsu. If you train and or compete long enough, you will get hurt. How often you get hurt and how badly you get hurt matters on a couple of factors. One is how dynamically you choose to play the game. Dynamic people get hurt more. Another one is how dynamic and insane and white belt energy your opponent is. I didn't mean to point at you at the time when I said that. Easy, bro. However, the third component of how often you get injured or how bad is how fragile you are. Training for strength increases the strength of your tendons, your ligaments, all of your fascial connective tissues and the muscles themselves. And guess what? Your bones too. Strength training top to bottom makes you more resilient and less likely to get hurt. 
that makes you better at jujitsu by giving you, if anything else, more mat time when you're not like in an ankle brace or something like that. So being strong doesn't just have to express itself real world and how you move and how you act, but if someone pushes you or tries to take down and you backstep a little bit off of like how you're supposed to, the stronger you are, the more you've been training with weights, the less likely that'll result in an injury and the more likely you'll just reposition and be right back into the match. That's a huge, huge deal. Number 10, the last reason how and why strength increases can help your jujitsu is a little bit less of a helpful tale and more of a cautionary tale. If you just get bigger and stronger all the time and you neglect your technique, your cap in how good you can be in jujitsu will be very short indeed. Because big strong jack dudes do okay, but they make all kinds of technical errors that fine gentlemen like this are designed to capitalize against. If you are already big and strong and you're trying to learn jujitsu technique, especially against other white belts early in the process, you can just, with dumb shittery and enough idiot strength, learn pretty close to nothing for, I don't know, two years? What's the longest time you've seen someone learn almost nothing and still get a belt? 15 years. 15 years. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if you are on the journey to becoming bigger and stronger, or just stronger, I was gonna say, or just bigger, but we're not at Taco Bell. Uh, it's a good journey in and of itself, it's fun. In any case, if you are on the journey of becoming bigger and stronger, or you're already big and strong and thinking, ah, I should stop strength training and lose some strength to get more technique, don't do any of that. What you should do, this is how I train. I pretty much almost never go more than 50 or 60% of my strength in any live training situation at the gym. Because if I use a ton of my strength, it fatigues the shit out of me and increases my chance of injury like crazy. It increases my competitors and training partners chance of injury like crazy. And it also prevents me from learning stuff. Cause instead of like, hey Mike, do a double leg like this. I just do Hulk smash or some shit like that. You know, slow clap, you beat someone in a training room, amazing. I cap my shit at 50 or 60% of strength and try to really work on my technical qualities. My technique is always improving. But what about strength? Well, that's improving too, just in the gym. Strength is to be trained in the gym. Technique is to be trained here. And in about the last two or three weeks before a big important competition, every few sessions in the gym with my training partners, I use more strength and more strength and more strength. Don't just show up to the competition and use strength all of a sudden, because it changes the dynamics a bit. It definitely changes your fatigue handling. If you don't ever go with heavy, with a ton of strength, in the training room, and then you go to compete and use tons of strength after 15 seconds of flexing your muscles, you're gonna be like, <gasps> ah, and you're gonna be completely gassed out. So over the period of two to three weeks before a big competition, use a bit more strength and more strength and more strength. Last half week, drop out the strength, just go to flowing so your body can recover, and you'll be ready. All that strength you have been building through weight training outside of jiu-jitsu will be there, ready to be used optimally by you to execute jiu-jitsu. You guys like my my, what do you think, coach? If you saw somebody on like a subway stop doing this, would you think like, oh, they're doing like lapel dragging or you're like, that guy's uh, not unwell? <laughs> I don't even know where to start with you. Well, a, a little bit of column A, a little column B. All right, so save the jujitsu training for jujitsu. Don't get in here and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Your strength is a weapon for you to use at the time that it's right. In jujitsu, you stay 50 or 60% if you're really strong. And then as you get closer to a competition, just over the last couple of weeks, really start to use your strength. Because we build strength in the gym. We build the jiu-jitsu technique on the mats. And speaking of building strength in the gym, how the hell are we supposed to do that? Don't we have any tips about that? Well, I'm glad you asked because here comes part two of the video. All right, hopefully that was enjoyable. Hopefully some of it made sense. Here's the thing, guys. If you want more, specifically details on how to build your BJJ weight training program, it's a super cheap thing. It's link in the description below through BJJ Fanatic, super trusted source. Get in there if you want, buy the stuff. It's like 30 bucks or something like that for more than an hour and a half of super in-depth conversation about how to design and understand and manipulate and create and everything about your jujitsu weight training program. Hope you had a good time and I hope you guys enjoy that other video. Peace.